Um, I'm going to talk about now the cough assist machines. Um, I'm going to go through two cough assist machines. The first one is this one here, which we would normally know as the Emerson cough assist machine. This is the older style cough assist machine, which you can't entrain oxygen through. So you need to decide with your patient and whether this machine is suitable or not. So if the patient is on high oxygen requirements, it may not be the cough assist of choice. Um, what we're going to do is just in terms of setting up and preparing for your patient, you need to get a pack. So there is, um, with the cough assist, it comes with a wee basket and in the basket should be set up with the assistance with different sizes of packs. So there will be a small pack, a medium pack and a large pack. And the difference just between the two the packs is just the size of the face mask. So in a small pack, you'll have a small face mask. In a medium pack, you'll have a medium face mask. And in the large pack, you'll have the large face, pack, face mask. In terms of applying the application of it, you have the filter. The filter goes onto the end closest to the machine. You have your oxygen tubing and then you have your face mask. Okay. Obviously, with our patients currently with COVID-19, we're um, recommending you to do, use a second filter and the second filter will then just be in place just before um, the face mask itself. So that is the mach machine um, ready to use with the patient. What I'm going to go through now is go through the dials themselves. In the hospital, generally, we want to use a customised um, treatment. So we normally use it on a manual mode. So if when you come to the machine, it'll say manual and auto. So if you flick it over to the manual mode and then all the settings here on the left hand side are, um, are um, switched off. So you don't need to worry about them. So on to manual mode. When we're going to set up the machine, we want to set the pressures. Um, with this machine, the best way to set the pressures is to take the face mask off. I'm going to turn this on. So it's plugged into the wall. This is the on off switch here. So we're going to turn it on. And as you can hear the noise, it is quite loud. Okay. In order to set the pressure, what we need to do is put it onto a hard surface. Because it's on wheels, you might need to stabilize it with the foot. And you're going to put it onto the top. In terms of setting the pressures then, you're going to flick the lever here onto exhalation. And then we're going to use this button at the bottom in order to select the right um, pressure, exhalation pressure that you want. It does take a wee minute or two to adjust, so give it a wee bit of time. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it there at the minute. It's set at in around 25 exhalation. Okay, so as you can see, this is the um, this lever switches from exhalation to inhalation. So that's that set for 25. When we come over, I'm going to turn this off just a wee second so that you can hear. The other wee levers that we have on the side is your inhalation pressure. And this gives you a percentage of your exhalation pressure that you have set. If you turn the dial right over to the right hand side, you're going to get 100% of that pressure. So if you've set your exhalation pressure at minus 25, your inhalation pressure is going to be 25. If you turn it over, over on the dial, over onto the left hand side, as far as it'll go, that'll give you 50%. So if you've set your exhalation pressure of um, 25, then your insulation pressure will be in around 12 to 13. The next wheel, um, lever that we have or knob at the bottom is called your, in, your inhalation flow. And as you can see, there is three arrows on the left hand side and one arrow on the right hand side. And this allows you to adjust your flow. And it depends on the type of patient that you have. So if you have somebody that you're concerned about giving too much um, flow in, like a pediatric or an elderly patient who's compromised, you might want to give a lower flow, which is on the right hand side. If you're happy enough to give a higher flow, which would be the equivalent of maybe about 10 litres, um, you go to the, the left hand side. Okay. So once you have it set up, you've got your pressure, exhalation pressure. You can check it and make sure you've got the inhalation pressure that you need. And then you can attach it on to the face mask and then apply it to the patient. Then with this one, again, as you're giving it to the patient, you'll be flicking in between inhalation and exhalation. Okay. With, these, with a patient, if they're not able to hold it onto their face themselves, you may need to assist it and you may need a second person to um, provide you with that assistance. As you're doing it, you're again, you're ideally what we want to do is start with 
inhalations and then going on to exhalation. So I'm going to turn this back on again. And, of course, and your treatment is going to be determined by the patient itself. You may want to do three inhalations. So you're flicking over to the right, in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out, two, three, in, two, three, out. Three. Okay, and then as you're going to flicking over, you might want to then do an exhalation. So you're flicking right over from inhalation into exhalation. Okay, so again, your commands could be in, two, three, out, two, three, pause. And again, in, two, three, out, two, three, pause. Okay, you could do four to six breaths, depending on how your patient is. And that would be a cycle. And as, when you're finished with doing four to six cycles, depending on your patient, then you want to finish off with one or two insufflations. Okay, so again, you're going in, two, three, and you could be just pausing. You could be going in, two, three, out, two, three, pause. And then always end off with your two insufflations. In, two, three, in, two, three, and right. Now we're going to talk about the cough assist, which is called the Nippy Clearway. The main difference between this and the Emerson is that you can entrain oxygen through this machine. Okay. So for your patients that have a higher oxygen requirement, this is going to be a more suitable uh, machine or cough assist machine for, of choice. What you need to do when you're attaching your oxygen, you need to make sure again that the machine is turned on first of all, then the oxygen is turned on, the oxygen is turned off first, and then the machine is turned off. And this just prevents, because this machine, there is an electrical piece of equipment, there is a risk um, with um, a fire hazard. So it is very important that the oxygen is never running when the machine switch has been turned. Okay. In terms of the machine being set up ready for the patient, it comes again with a wee trolley. And on the trolley will be all the pieces of equipment that you would need. You can see when you're attaching it on, you have a fine bore tubing, which it attaches onto the fine port. You have a wide bore tubing, which attaches onto the wide port. It all comes as one piece and attaches on then to a face mask on the end. Again, as you can see at the minute, the filter is on at the end. But if we were using it with COVID-19 patients, we could put a second filter then just closest to the machine as well to give extra protection. Because we're in training oxygen, again, you can add your oxygen and treatment port um, into this section. And again, you attach the fine bore tubing onto the flow meter at the wall to apply your oxygen. And again, just in terms, you have to determine what oxygen concentration, um, how many flow, um, how many, what flow liters um, of oxygen that you would need for that patient. So again, if it was 24% oxygen, you're thinking of one liter, two liters, 28%, and so on, in order to meet the needs of the patient. Okay, so in terms of the machine itself, as we said already, it's an electrical piece of equipment. We have it plugged in at the wall. We not, you may not be able to see the screen itself, so I'm going to talk through um, the different settings on the machine itself. The power button is on the very bottom left-hand side, and you turn it on and off using this button. In terms of the settings that we're going to use for the patient, there on the, on the, there's five buttons on your left-hand side and five buttons on the right-hand side. When you press the mode button, the mode that we're going to use in the hospital setting is going to be a manual control. So you can adjust it to suit the needs of the patient. Okay, so once you go into manual mode, you'll see on the top of the screen, there'll be an insufflation setting and an exhalation setting. With the Emerson, you had to set up the, the levels themselves um, using, the, the, using the top of the machine and adjusting the dial. Um, the, benefits of using this machine is that it is electronic 
and you can set the levels by pressing on the screen digitally. You do not need to recheck the, the settings themselves. When you press the top left hand button for insulfation, there will be a pink light flashing and that allows you to change the, the value. If you press the positive button on the bottom right hand side, it'll make it more positive. If you press the negative button, it will make it more negative. So at the minute I've set it at 20 centimetres of water and to set it you press the set button and then the flashing light will turn off. In order to set your exfiltration pressure, again press your exfiltration button which is on the top right hand corner. Again it will come up a pink flashing screen around the exfiltration to allow you to be able to change the value. Again if you're going to press the negative button, you're making it more negative. So if, you're, if I have it at minus 25 and I press more negative, I'm going more negative into minus 26, minus 27. Okay, and if I press the positive button, then I'm making it um, less negative. Whenever you've got the levels that you want, then again, you set that and the flashing light will turn off. Okay, so when the, with the other machine, you had to manually flick over between insulflation and exulflation. The benefit of having this machine is that we have a wee handheld device. Okay, again there's brakes on it so you can lock it in position. You can position the face mask closest to the patient and again ideally if the patient can hold it themselves that's brilliant. If they can't again you may need some assistance to be able to hold it and have a good seal over the patient's face. And again, it means that you have your hands free then to be able to trigger insulfation, which is going up, and exulfation going down. And again, your treatment is going to be dependent on the patient's needs themselves. Okay, so again, depending on what your cycle might be, that you might be trying a couple of insulflations on their own first of all, and then followed by an exulfation. You may be doing a single insulfation followed by an exulfation or just a bespoke um, treatment that suits you. So again, if you were going, if you were taking four breaths in and then a uh, breath out on a cough, you'll be going in, two, three, pause, two, three. In, two, three, pause, two, three. In, two, three, pause, two, three. And if the next one that we're going to do a big breath in on a cough, you go in, two, three, out, two, three, cough. And encouraging the patient to cough with you as they're um, feeling that exhalation pressure. Okay, and with all the treatments, then again, you're, you're adjusting the treatments um, to, in relation to how the patient's responding and to the um, clinical need of the patient.